Hello, this is Janos, and we are continuing today our camera unboxing. And what we were unboxing is the Canon 5D Classic. And um, there's one thing that I have not mentioned in my previous video where I unboxed it with the not so helpful help of uh, Machiko. She is still uh, sleeping next to me in the Poang chair. And there is also Kintaro in his uh, box there. Both of them are napping. And um, there is no way to wake them up. So <laughs> I have to do this video by myself again. So what did, as you know that these cameras, the 5D Classic and the 20D which is the full frame ancestor of the 5D Classic. Both of these today are low megapixel count cameras. They, they count as low megapixel count. Of course, the time they came out, that was just bah, top bananas. But, uh, but now uh, people think it's uh, way, way too low. But uh, I don't think it's, it's, it's way too low. Uh, if you have like a 24 inch size monitor screen, I think all you need on that is a 2 megapixel image to, to be just absolutely fantastic. And, and you need more than 2 megapixels if you have a bigger screen, a much bigger screen than that. Uh, of course, if you want to go for uh, like an Apple Retina display type of uh, 15 megapixel resolution, then yeah, you can have more uh, resolution as well. But uh the the there's a catch 22 there that i found that i have noticed and that catch 22 is that uh, the low megapixel count does something more than just low light sensitivity because there is the general knowledge that the higher the megapixel count each each pixel is getting less light so the low light iso is worse and worse that is true within the same sensor technology. So when you have uh, like a different sensor technology, like uh, like between uh, like a Sony A7, like the R1 and R5, there is also already a massive change in technology. There, uh, each pixel, even though it's smaller, but the smaller pixel can sense a lot more light. So there, this is not true. However. If, they, it, if Sony would come out with a 12 megapixel camera that uses the R5 technology and scale it down to uh, gigantic pixels of 12 megapixel total, its low light ability would just totally blow away the R5. And but what else? So why do I think low megapixel count is beneficial? Because when you look at it, if you want to crop from your image, having a, a 50 megapixel or 100 megapixel is phenomenal. Because you can crop out any itsy bitsy tiny uh, bits out of that photo and you have a, a still a full resolution photo that on your monitor, on your screen, will look like a, a full photograph without loss of detail. However, what is it that you will be missing? What I noticed is that you will be missing out the 3D depth. The, the, the higher the resolution of a sensor, the worse it gets with capturing depth. And, and the pictures will start to look flatter and flatter and flatter. And uh, this is something that once you notice, once your eye catches it, uh, you can't go back. Uh, after that, like uh, when, when I was younger, I was going for megapixels. Oh yeah, high megapixels, so awesome. I saw it, you know, on the computer screen, on, uh, on, on the photos and everything. And, Ooh, this is just so fantastic what other people took. And there actually I, uh, I was just marveling at the uh, photography skills of really advanced photographers because 
just remember what counts is really not the camera in your hand but your skill your eyes and your brains how you use that camera this is only a tool and your photos are only as good as your tool is i mean <laughs> as your as your knowledge of how to use that tool and and i was of course blown away by 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 the the art uh, of of those who who have uh, fantastic skills photography skills and i thought that the camera has a much bigger contribution to it than it actually does and when i got this mirrorless camera i'm shooting with which is 24 megapixels that's when i realized even though on paper it has much better low iso capability than my canon 20d is that its low iso photos even at iso 800 are pure rubbish compared to the ancient 20D, which was released in 2004. So why am I saying that? It's because as the ISO gets higher, the, the light gets lower, so there's less and less light to capture. And nowadays, the cameras, what they are doing is they are doing amplification. They are using transistors on board the sensor to amplify the signal. And that's why we get these monstrous low light ISOs like some modern Sony cameras, some of the Canons and others do like ISO 400,000 and things like that. However, uh, 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 an ISO 400,000 or even a million cannot change the laws of physics, cannot change the facts, which is if you don't have enough light, there is not enough information arriving at the camera sensor so no matter what you do uh, the when you use higher and higher isos the poorer and poorer the picture will be and and when you hear that like the sony r5 i mean uh, i mean not r the r5 it has such an amazing low light iso uh, what that means that it will have fabulous stunning picture quality at ISO 100 and as you go up that quality will degrade and those 40 plus megapixels or 60 or whatever it is now <laughs> they will also degrade as we go higher with the ISO because when you look at the 100% uh, pixel quality if you check it out at ISO 100,000 it won't be useful you won't be able to crop as much as you can at iso 100 not nearly as much and and just poof, the ability will plummet um, and uh, and up to the ability of the camera so this can take up to iso 3200 it it what it does when there's not enough light then it will just have a natural grain because the images, the pixel information is not over amplified by transistors and not over sharpened by the circuitry. So that's why these cameras like the 20D and 5D Classic have those natural looking images because there is no artificial sharpening baked into the raw file. And there is no artificial, uh, you know, like like those uh, double ISO that I, I for I, it escapes my mind what what Sony calls it, like like the double gain, double gain uh, uh, that that they employ in their sensors to boost the image. So a double gain means like two stages of amplification, which also means that you get an extra uh, noise. So each stage of amplification is not just a good thing. Yeah, it's good because uh, it amplifies the signal, but uh, it also adds its own noise. And you have to use noise uh, reduction. And, and, and what modern sensor cameras do, modern sensors do, is they bake in significant noise reduction even into the raw files and you can although there's a slider you can change like uh, how much sharpening you use how much uh, 
you are you are just boosting the signal but even at sharpening level zero when you put it down to lowest it already has some level of sharpening baked in to each pixel compared to the classic cameras the early digital cameras where when you set the sharpening to zero there is zero sharpening on it and you can get unsharpened unaltered pictures from your camera <sighs> so i think that's that's what what is something really important to mention to me uh, that once i got my modern mirrorless camera i realized that the higher megapixel count and the on paper better low light iso did not give it to me what i wanted from the photos uh, the low light if i have like a crank up to iso 800 or 1000 are not i don't want to look at those photos i they are worthless i cannot work with them and and with this even the ones where i crank it up to 3200 yeah there's a lot of grain but it's such a, a beautiful film like grain on it it's like uh, looking at film and i i i I just have so many keeper photos that I took with that ridiculous ISO which is ridiculous to this camera and of course I cannot crop them I cannot uh, zoom into them and you you really need to be able to frame your shots uh, with, with these cameras there's no cropping and 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 that's why if if you are massively into cropping like I was in my earlier years you won't be having fun with it but if you are into cropping that also means you do not have the skill and the ability to frame the photos at least that's what happened to me and 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 i have a lot of complaints with people who complain about that and and once you develop the eye to take the frame to capture the frame then then you don't need to crop anymore and and that is the game changer that's when you will be having these cameras as your last camera even your last camera and uh, so i think that that's that's a really really important consideration when we look at megapixels and low light iso true there's one more thing that in low light they will have trouble focusing so so you might be struggling with that and and yes I have struggled with that and despite of that I still got those shots that made it are just astonishing so even though I lost 90% of my shots that I took with this camera they weren't weren't good uh, but the 10% the I got is just I I cherish them so much more compared to taking thousands and thousands of uh, over baked shots with a mirrorless camera and uh, and that's why this 20d and its successor the 5d classic meant so much to me there's also the, the concern in low light and and actually i have resolved that i'm going to talk in another video about that resolution because it's a, it, how i solve it because it's something completely different and i don't want to go off topic right now uh, what I want to add to this video because now we are in the uh, area of, uh, of basically the sensor quality sensor technology and how the images look like when you have a low uh, megapixel count camera is that what I've noticed is that the, uh, the, the crop sensor equivalent of the 5D classic is truly the 20D because they have the same sensor uh, color science so i think everyone has seen already plenty of videos about the 5d series and, and people saying that the the 5d classics color science is the closest to the 6d mark one and the 5d mark two has a very different color science mark three mark four as well and uh, and if you are looking for the 5d classic color science and uh, 
but maybe you do not have the budget for that I know it's like uh, 20 years ago I wouldn't have had the budget and uh, and then I would recommend the 20D because they have the exact same color science uh, just like when you when I pick them up it's really hard to tell I have to inspect which is the camera I picked up they look so similar and even when you turn on the camera the menus are identical so if you shoot with one then changing to the other you will, will not notice any difference except one <laughs> maybe two if you are conscientious of the budget and cost of the camera one is that this camera is is extremely cheap today so if you if you are a student and you want to pick up a, a camera and you want to learn it and you want to become a, a photographer and, and and take photos for your own pleasure that you can look at 20 years from now and you still feel wow this has stood the test of time then the, I can recommend the 20D wholeheartedly. The, they have actually two differences apart from the price. And one of the differences is that the 20D is actually slightly smaller than the 5D Classic. Ever so slightly smaller. So if I put them on top of each other, you see, maybe you don't see, but there is a, a teensy, teensy bit of difference between their sizes so if you if you are considered about size and weight 20d is a bit more compact however if you shoot a lot with flash then it becomes a whole lot more compact because it has a built-in flash oh, I cannot pop it up when it's off let's turn it on let's let's, let's put where's the flash I think it doesn't really want to pop up the flash anymore and actually oh no it does look at that it's still alive uh, and because I haven't told you that I got the 5d classic because the 20d died so I had to do that and actually it still turns on I can still look through the viewfinder and it measures light everything but when I press the shutter nothing happens I will make a separate video on that one day what happened there and and I went to great length to fix that even change the motherboard inside the camera myself because uh, Canon doesn't support this anymore it's been a very long time since Canon hasn't supported uh, the camera for repairs and even the motherboard change did not help so so that's why uh, I got the 5d classic instead because now I can afford to get a slightly better camera as an upgrade and yes I always wanted like a, the full frame uh, that gives me a little bit better in the low light area because in the past I thought it wasn't good enough and uh, I was going just with you know what the media says that just resolution 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 but now it took me time it took me 15 years to mature enough to know that uh, it's not all that counts and 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 now I'm much more uh, conscientious of the look how the how the photo looks and it gives me uh, so much more pressure to have uh, a natural look from a photo than to have an artificial look because nowadays these modern digital cameras the mirrorlesses they give amazing amazing resolution amazing low light ability amazing focusing the best is the focusing but all of those photos looked as if they've been already photoshopped pretty heavily and and with these cameras what you get is pre photoshop raw files with the mirrorless it's photoshopped raw files even when it comes to you as raw comes of the sensor but it's already been uh, heavily edited by the electronics in your camera from modern mirrorless you are never getting uncooked unedited photos and and uh, and then what you do with editing is just edit more 
and you will never see how it would look like to have an unprocessed file from a modern camera because it doesn't exist. So I think that's, that's now the punchline, that's the ending for this video. Thank you so much for being here. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.